It's time to accelerate. Hi, I'm your host, Andy Paul. Join me as I host conversations with the leading experts in sales, marketing, sales automation, sales process, leadership, management, training, coaching, any resource that I believe to help you accelerate the growth of your sales, your business, and most importantly, you. Hello, and welcome to Accelerate. I'm excited to talk with my guest today. Joining me is Mark Williams. He is the founder and managing director of ETN LinkedIn Training. He is the UK's leading LinkedIn and social selling expert, also known as Mr. LinkedIn. And he hosts a popular weekly podcast on LinkedIn called LinkedInformed. Now, we all know growing sales is hard work, and the whole process starts with developing new business. And if your job is to develop new business, then you have to find decision makers to talk with. And developing new prospects is work that most sellers don't enjoy. But LinkedIn has become an indispensable tool for sales reps of all stripes to develop new sales, and it's very likely still the best way to connect with potential buyers and decision makers for your products and services. Now, my guest today, Mark Williams, is going to help us with some advice on how to use LinkedIn to grow your sales. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Andy. It's great to be here. Well, thanks for joining us. So tell us a little bit about you beyond that little brief intro I gave. Okay, yeah. So Mark Williams, as I say, known as Mr. LinkedIn, it's a Actually, a Twitter name that, Mr. Underscore LinkedIn is my Twitter name, and it just sort of almost became a brand of its of its own right. A good LinkedIn one to grab, too. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Well, yes and no. You know, LinkedIn aren't wild about it, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's just, as I always say to them, you know, it's not a brand I particularly push. It's just what everyone calls me. So, you know, it's one of those ones. Um, but, yeah, so uh, it's about my real name's Mark Williams, uh, based in Cheshire in the UK. And um, and I, I, I talk to people all day long about LinkedIn because it's – my real passion and uh yeah so uh, that's me my background i originally worked in sales and recruitment i was in the recruitment industry for 20 years or so uh the latter 12 of that i ran a recruitment business and so that was as i think with a lot of people actually my first experience of linkedin was through um recruiting well how did Uh, it become this passion i mean what what were you doing at Spark the spark that said, okay, I want to become the expert on LinkedIn. Yeah, I, for me, what happened was I was running a team. And so I had people working for me who were out there generating business. They were finding candidates, but they were also finding clients, uh, customers as well. So very much a sales role. And, you know, uh, this, was, this is probably about 2005. LinkedIn started in 2003. And um, I, I, one day, a top sales guy... Um, I caught, I walked into my office in London. He was sat there staring at a computer screen. I sort of twigged it as you do as a sales manager and thought, rather be seeing him on the phone, but okay, whatever. I'll, I'll turn a blind eye to that. Sat down, got myself a coffee, did a bit of work, came back out into the office. He's still staring at a screen. I'm yeah. thinking, mm, what's going on here? So I, but you know, uh, there, might, there might have been other people that I would have pulled to one side more quickly, but this guy's a top guy. So, uh, you know, already proven himself. So it's a bit odd. So I kind of went up to him and just said, um, you're all right. And he said, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Um, I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and he looked at me <laughs> and he went, you want to know why I'm not on the phone, don't you? And I said, well, I just, you know. I, I it occurred like, to me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And, um, and he said, no, I've, um, I've got this. Because I, I was starting to think, actually, paranoid sales manager. Oh, he's leaving. Right. You know, he's, um, that's why he's gone quiet. You know, he's, uh, he's lost his motivation. He's about to resign. You know, here we go. <laughs> saving, his, saving his prospects for the next company. <laughs> Doing his CV or something, or his resume, as you would call it in the US. Um, but it, that wasn't the case. He said, no, I found this website. It's called LinkedIn. It's amazing. I went, all right, what's that? I'd never heard of it, really. And he said, it's, um, well, it's a social networking site. And I went, oh, God. I said, come on. What do you mean, like Facebook? total waste of time what are you doing come on they're not going to make any money doing that thing <laughs> so i was really cynical and he went no no honestly he said um just give me five minutes and i'll show you what it's all about and so you know again you know i thought okay i gotta listen to him and um he showed me and this guy it hadn't been working for me for very long i hadn't been in sales for very long maybe 12 months 18 months max and so we didn't know that many people really. And he started showing me the way it worked. And of course, I've been in business for donkey's years by this point, knew lots of people in the market that we were covering. And so I created an account, started finding some people and thought, all right, okay, yeah, he's on here. She's on here. Started connecting with them. And then for me, the bit that got me so excited and still does today was the fact that I could go and look at the profile of someone that I already knew 
and then see who they knew. And I was like, in sales, that's everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's just absolute genius that that can happen. And still to this day, I keep saying to people, have you any idea before LinkedIn <laughs> how we would get that information? You would have to have lots of good conversations, develop loads of warmth, and then they may start to open up and tell you who else they know. And they may then decide that they might want to introduce you to those people. But it would take quite a long time. Whereas today, I can just see straight away exactly who they know. I just thought that was magic, to be yes. honest. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. Well, so, you know, having jumped into it and having become this expert, so what are sort of the biggest misconceptions that sales reps still have about LinkedIn? Uh, okay, the number one by far is that it's a place to sell. <laughs> Which is kind of understandable if you're in a sales role that you would look at LinkedIn as a sales tool and go, well, okay, so a place to sell. So I'm going to contact someone and I'm going to sell to them. And that's completely the wrong thing to do. So without a doubt, the first thing when I'm talking to salespeople, and I train all kinds of people in use of LinkedIn, but a lot of work I do is with salespeople. And when I talk to salespeople, the first thing is to make them step back from the instinct of trying to sell because this is not a place to do that. It's a place to build relationships. It's a place to get to know people. It's a place to do great research. There's lots of stuff you can do. It's all part of the sales process, but not that selling bit. You do that face-to-face, on the phone, away from LinkedIn. Don't do it on LinkedIn. So that's definitely the, the kind of first step, I think, with most salespeople in LinkedIn. And what's the other one? I think generally a misunderstanding of that it's a two-way Street and not everybody, not everybody's guilty of this, so it's not as common. But a lot of a lot of people in sales sort of see it as uh, it's a tool for me to go and find people, for me to go and approach people, da da da, uh, and not realise that at the same time they have to look great. So there's a, a, a you know that their profiles often you look at a profile, especially in sales, I find, and it, it reads like they're looking for a job. So it, re- it always does. I, I always like the one where some sales yeah. rep. So, you know, looking for opportunities type thing. It's like, dude, you're, you're employed. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> well, that's that. If they say that, that's even worse. But it's like, often it's it's the fact that they, they sit down and they go, I've got to write this profile about myself. And again, it's just instinct, isn't it? They start writing it in a kind of, I'm this, I'm that, I can do this, I've hit target this amount of times, da 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 da, da. You know, I, and, and it's like, well, when you read that from the outside, then that makes you look like you're looking for a job. And yet you're coming to me as a potential customer and saying, I should use your organization, but you want to leave them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so why would I want to do that? And they go, oh, right, yeah, and no, I hadn't thought about it like that. And sometimes they haven't, you know, they did create their profile when they were looking for a job. That's why they got into LinkedIn, which is a, a fairly common route. Sure. And they've just never updated it ever since. And the language is all about, you know, how amazing they are and why you should employ them. So, so when you work with sales reps on LinkedIn, how do, you help, how do you help them set goals for what they should be achieving using it? Um. Well, I mean, that, that obviously the goals will very much depend on their business and their objectives. But, you know, we take those and we look at what they're trying to achieve, we look at tr- where they're trying to go, if you like. And then we break that down into how that can be achieved through LinkedIn. But the kind of things that we focus on are a lot more around activity and um, relationships and building those relationships rather than necessarily X number of appointments because that it's it's a, it's a sort of precursor to that side of selling, really. What you're trying to do is become much more visible. And by being much more visible, you've got to be a lot more active. You've got to do the right things with your profile, but kind of put that to one side for a second. Once you've got a great profile, job not done, not anything like, you know. So in effect, all you've done at that point is, you know, made sure that you look the part, you've got a decent suit on and you look good. But then you're walking into a networking environment and if you're not doing anything, you're effectively sitting in the corner, you know, eating volivants and having a glass of wine while everyone else is talking. Well, and so what, what is the key then to, you said building the exposure, um, yeah. you know, beyond obviously the profile. So in terms of the actual communications with the people they're connecting with. Yeah, so so a whole range of activities. I mean, activity drives LinkedIn as an algorithm as well. So, you know, the, the machine, 
you have to be conscious of two things. One is visibility to other people. So that's things like, you know, posting status updates, responding to other people's status updates, engaging, writing comments, getting involved in groups, connecting with people, searching for people, looking at lots of profiles because there's a good chance they're going to look back at you. All those kind of things all count. They count because people notice you more and so you become more visible to them. But they also count because the machine, if you like, the algorithm that runs this tool called LinkedIn is constantly trying to assess how interesting you are to people. So you have to play that game of being given it all the signs that it wants to know that you are interesting. So if, for instance, all you ever did, and, you know, I'm sure you receive this type of stuff I do all the time on LinkedIn, people send in these blatant sales messages. Mm-hmm. Of course, they just, what happens is they send message after message after message, and you might think or they might believe that they're being active, but the, the machine, LinkedIn, looks at that and goes, no, 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 that's not active. You're not interesting because every time you send a message, nobody ever responds. So actually, that's going to downgrade you in terms of you being interesting. But if people respond to you, then that's different. And if you respond to them and you start commenting on things that they've done, then, oh, hold on a second, we're going to start giving you plus points here. So you start going up in the the rating of interesting, if you like. So, you know, that no, nobody knows this. Well, I say nobody knows it. People that code LinkedIn know it, but um, nobody knows the exact algorithm. You know, that's a closely guarded secret. But when you play with this tool a lot, you do start to see the effect that regular engaging activity, how it works and how it develops your um, visibility on LinkedIn. Yeah, I mean, I can speak from personal experience. I mean, I've, <laughs> I've seen my, my number of followers, not connections, but followers mm. on LinkedIn you know, rise from virtually nothing to, gosh, now it's, you know, well over 37,000 uh, wow. in a matter of months. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's, that's, you know, content, engagement, you know, putting out content is important, but, um, and some people are very good at that, but then don't do anything in terms of engaging. But a lot of it is just about, you know, if you are just responding to people and getting into conversations with people, one of the things that I think holds salespeople back, and this is, I think, one of the great challenges that we have in sales is that, instinctively we we want to as salespeople i know my i've always been like this i would i'd rather meet someone i'd rather talk to them than send them an email or interact with them online Mm -hmm. but the world that we live in is that the people that matter are not what you think as a salesperson it's the people that you're trying to sell to it's your potential customers and how they act that matters and they are increasingly acting online they don't want to take your call they don't like being called they don't want someone to interrupt them while they're in the middle of something we're all leading very busy lives but they are happy to interact with you online or they're more happy to interact with you online so it's it's understanding kind of what they want and then developing that and it does go against the grain a little bit but what i try and say to sales pe- sales people is look you are naturally, by the job that you do, you're good with people. You talk to people. You're a good listener. You know, all of these things, you just need to do that online as well. Because if you do it online, then you will shine, you know. And once you get into it, you'll actually find it very enjoyable. So just it's just getting past that barrier of, I don't really want to sit. It's like me going back to that situation all those years ago, sitting in front of, you know, the old thing was, you don't make any money sitting in front of a computer screen. Right. Well, actually, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think the, the key point that you're bringing up though too is that it goes against type for salespeople to not always be selling right and so part of this relationship building is a little bit different not a lot but different online is that you said you have to have these conversations these communications that are about the subject matter not necessarily about selling something because it will eventually get around to selling something yeah but you have to build that trust and that rapport first yeah, absolutely right. And there's a bit of patience with that, which again, you know, stereotypical, I know, but salespeople are not known for their patience either. They want to get on with it, want to get to the results as quickly as you can, very driven. Um, but it does take a bit of patience. I, heard, I saw a quote recently, I can't remember who this was from, but I thought this was great, which was, I might not be quoting this exactly, but it was salespeople are too busy selling to help their prospects. <laughs> I, think, I think there's some truth in that, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because it's about me and I want to hit my sales target. So I want you to buy what I've got to offer. But actually, if you completely reverse that and go, forget that, right? That'll happen. 
what I need to do is understand what I can do to help you. So let me understand what your needs are. What do you, it doesn't have to be something that I can solve with my product. That's not the point here. The point here is whatever your issues are, I'm going to try and help you with that in some way. Right? I will be able to find, and this is again one of the powerful things about LinkedIn. We think of it in sales as a tool to find people and then you know, make contact with them. But, and that's all great. But also, as you build a network, you're building massive resource, massive resource. You know, a quick story for you here. I, I, I once had a, this was actually in a, in a sales role. Um, I mean, I was kind of in a sales management role, but this was a, a, a key customer. Um, and I, I went to see him and we talk about, you know, his business and all that stuff. It was, it was in recruitment. So he had a particular recruitment requirement, but I was talking about his business and his challenges. And I won't bore you with what it was. It was something technical. I didn't even fully understand it, but it was a certain issue uh, in his marketplace. Now I've been in that market many, many years. I connected with lots of people on LinkedIn. I know lots of people. There's no way I could help him with that problem directly, but without consulting him. He told me the issue. I went away. I went onto LinkedIn and I asked the question. I didn't say it was specifically him or anything like that. I just said, you know, uh, I was speaking to a good contact of mine recently. This is a particular challenge they've got. Who knows anybody that's got an answer to that? And loads of people are pitching it. I think I posted it in a group and I sent messages to some contacts that I knew on LinkedIn who I thought might be able to help. And loads of people pitched in, of, you know, either offering advice as in what he wants to be thinking about this or they should do this or actual names of people speak to this guy over in hong kong he can probably help you with that he's a really good guy i'll introduce you through linkedin da, 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 right but none of this has got anything to do with my product which was recruitment at mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but but i then went back to him and i said look you know i hope you don't mind i didn't mention you by name or anything but i put it out to my network on linkedin because i know a lot of people and um and i've got some answers for you which i hope it hope it's helpful and he was kind of looked at me as if I'd, you know, I'd gone mad or something, and went, <laughs> "Thanks very much." Um, and I could almost see him thinking, "Why are you doing this?" But, but great, thanks very much for that. Now, of course, the reality of that is that further go forward a couple of weeks, and this is a specific to recruitment, but you could imagine this in other sales scenarios, is that he wanted to see some people for an interview, but he this is a second interview, but he actually just wanted to see one candidate for a second interview, which is dodgy because if that one candidate decides he want the job, right, right. I'm stuffed, right. right? So that you never want that in recruitment. So I want him to see more than one person. So we're now into that typical sales scenario of I'm trying to get him to do something that I know is the right thing to do, and I'm trying to sell it to him as the right thing to do, but his reaction to that is, okay, you're selling at me, right? Mm. And we've all been in that situation where you're trying to put it in a way that it it's in your interests, but he's kind of pushing back going, oh, you just want a sale here. You just want me to recruit a candidate. Right, you? the barriers go up. Yeah. So in this particular scenario, he said to me, yeah, I want to see this person for an interview. And I went, okay, that's good, but I think you should see more than one. And I'm just about ready to go into this pitch as to why. And he went, all right, okay, why is that? And I said, well, because, you know, you might, it might all go wrong. You just, and he went, oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> and I just went, oh, okay, it's that easy. And of course, it's that easy because our relationship had changed. Right. And our relationship had changed because I helped him. So he now saw me as a trusted business associate, not as someone that's trying to persuade him to do something that I want him to do. Well, I think and, that's a, it's a great, great example that you give and a good lesson for salespeople because I, I had a, two examples of this recently myself. I mean, one on both direction where um, I'd given a webinar recently and somebody asked a question afterwards about they need help with a specific thing. It was actually, did I know a, most, a really effective way to, to build a referral network? And... You know, I, yeah, I've got opinions. I know how to how to do it. But I thought, well, you know, hey, there's some people I know that are really specialists in that. And they've been guests on my show. And I knew their books and their colleagues. So, you know, I referred them to these other two people. Mm. And I think it, it really surprised him <laughs> when he got that answer that, you know, I didn't come back to him with, hey, I can do that for you. And, yeah, here's what it'll cost. Um, yep. And then, you know, it happened the other way for me. I, I got the same thing happened. I got a business referred to me from a guy I know, a colleague I know, who had been approached by somebody he had a relationship with and they wanted him to do a certain piece of business. They just said, yeah, it's not my thing, but here, talk to Andy. Yep. And I, I guarantee the customer who's going to be my customer now as well as his is going to go back to him for other stuff in the future because he 
did the right thing by them. Yeah. And isn't that just so true that it, it's about doing the right thing? Um, and where LinkedIn comes into that is that it just gives you so much more resource than you could ever normally have. So right. you've just got so many more people that you potentially can reach out to so long as you use it as a tool to build relationships. And of course, the relationships that you're building aren't always with pe- just with people that you want to do business with. So I mean, that's the other aspect to this is I'm always saying to salespeople, look, you know, don't, don't look at it as that person's a prospect, that person's not. Therefore, that's where my attention's going to be because they're the people I want to buy something from me. You know, look at it in the context of, look, I'm, what I'm trying to do here is be a great networker, talk to lots of people, build visibility, and build my network. And I make good contacts that could be really, I might be able to help them, they may be able to help me, and they may be able to help my prospects as well. So that's why I'm trying to really network properly and build lots of contacts. Excellent. Okay. Good point. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about your 5C system for LinkedIn. Uh, And we'll be right back with my guest, Mark Williams. Hi, this is Andy. Connect and Sell is used by sales reps at nearly a thousand companies, including hundreds of technology startups and several Fortune 500 companies, to overcome the challenges of getting prospects on the phone. Companies using Connect and Sell grow their revenues faster by enabling their sales reps to have more sales conversations in 90 minutes than they could otherwise achieve in an entire week. Connect and Sell can be deployed directly to your sales reps, or you can take advantage of their outbound on-demand service, which delivers qualified prospect meetings scheduled directly on your sales reps' calendars. Visit connectandsell.com to learn more about how Connect and Sell can start filling your pipeline today. Okay, welcome back with my guest today, Mark Williams, Mr. LinkedIn, the UK's leading expert on LinkedIn. Um... You have a system you call the 5C, the letter C, capital C, system for LinkedIn. So yep. let's spend a few minutes talking about that. So what are the five Cs? Okay, so the five Cs are uh, commence, create the right impression, connect, communicate, and convert. But I'll go through those. Commence is really, I mean, well, the point behind the 5C system, and it's like an online video tutorial course, the point behind it is that I do believe that when you're using a tool like LinkedIn, you need a system you know, a process and a system and a way of making sure that this tool works for you. So the first C is, I call it commence. Um, It's about making sure that your house is in order. So that's making sure your settings are right, that you understand how this tool works. So it's about, you know, there's lots of settings, loads of settings in LinkedIn. They're just about to change them all actually as well, uh, which is great having just produced the course. (laughs) I'm going to have to update it. (laughs) Uh, But there you go. Such is life. LinkedIn yes. changes all the time. But um, uh, but that's about getting your house in order, really, making sure all your settings are right. You're not giving the wrong information away, but that you are being open and available to people in other respects as well. Module two is create the right impression, and that's about profiles. Um, and, you know, everyone ever involved with LinkedIn training will talk about profiles. To me, the importance of a profile is that this is your first impression, full stop. So often it's going to be your first impression. So, you know, I don't know, you might, you might, you might be into cold calling. You might get through to people. You might not get voicemail. You might actually get through to someone. And when you get through to them and you're introducing who you are, have you ever heard them tapping keys in the background? Now they might be distracted. They might be on Google. They might be playing a game or they might be looking you up on LinkedIn. LinkedIn profile, right? Absolutely. So as you're speaking to them and the words that they're hearing, they're comparing that and being influenced by what they're reading as well, because everybody multitasks like that these days. So they're looking at you, they're looking at your picture, they're looking at your headline, they're looking at your profile, and it's creating in their mind something positive or negative. And the question I always say to people is, you've got to ask yourself, am I proud of my LinkedIn profile? Because if you're not, you've got work to do. You should be really proud of your LinkedIn profile. You should think that really is something that I could put up there and say, this is fantastic. Well, one of the key points you're making here, though, is that it has to align. Your profile, what you say in your profile, has to align with what you say when you talk to somebody as a prospect. Yep, absolutely. And it's a point I think it's overlooked a lot because I see this this mismatch all the time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, for the reasons that we mentioned before, a lot of people just see it as a one-way street, so they're not 
really thinking about how that affects people coming back the other way. I mean, you know, even to even if they haven't checked you out, which they almost certainly would have done, but imagine that you actually get an appointment with somebody and you turn up and, you know, you announce yourself in reception. I'm here to see, oh, take a seat. He'll be with you in five minutes. Ten minutes goes past and then eventually they come out to see you and you go in to meet them and you do your sales pitch. But in that ten minutes that you were sat in reception, what do you think they were doing? Yeah, they're looking at your profile. And the point is that as they were, they're starting to form an opinion about you in their mind so that when you walk through the door, they're looking for you to reinforce that um, and uh, or be completely different to what they expected. And if it's the latter, then you've got not, you haven't got much chance of winning that business. No, not so, at all. So, Absolutely, really critical. But you know, it's a sort of you, you update your profile, you keep on top of it. But largely, it's a kind of it's, you do it, you get it right, and then you move on. So that the third stage, the third module is connect. So that's about growing your network. And of course, you know, there's all these th- different philosophies as to how you grow a network on LinkedIn. You get lions, you know, people that connect with anybody and everybody, and then you get people that you know follow the LinkedIn rules, if you like, and only connect with people that they know well. And for me. It's a very simple thing. Look, you connect with relevant people, but relevant can be quite wide <laughs> because, as I said before, relevant might be people that you feel might be in a position to help the kind of people that you'd like to do business with. So obviously, prospects are people that you connect with, but there's a whole raft of other people out there that could be very useful and helpful to you that you, you would want to connect with as well. But you do it with purpose. You don't just let it happen. You do it with purpose and focus, and you do it in the right way. So, you know, that's kind of we get into all or the the nitty gritty of how you do invites, how you receive invites, how you start the engagement process um, by replying to every invite. You know, one of the tips I always say to people is, yeah, someone invites you to connect, you look at their profile, you go, yeah, that's relevant. And then you say, yes. Now what do you do? Because 95% of people that I speak to do nothing. Now that's a bit like being in a a networking environment and someone coming up to you and saying, oh, hi, my name is Mark Williams and uh, I'm a LinkedIn trainer and um, here's my business card. And then you going, thanks, and walking off. (laughs) Leaving me still there. Hello, (laughs) where did you go? Right? You wouldn't dream of doing that. And yet people send you an invite and go, all right, they might not do it properly. They might not customize the message. They might not introduce themselves. But that's, you know, a case that they probably just don't know how to use LinkedIn, but it's an opportunity for you to engage with them. So write them a message back. Thanks for connecting. How can I help you? You know, start the conversation going. So that's that's module moving into module four, which is all about communication. That's the biggest module because there's so much of this is about that communication piece and engaging with people on a regular basis. You know, we've got published posts, we've got status updates, we've got groups, and we've got just engaging with your homepage feed, just looking at what's going on and talking to people. And then the final stage, the exciting bit is when you get to stage five is conversion, which is you know, turning that all that work and all that opportunity, you've built up all this goodwill, you're very well known, you've got lots of good relationships, but, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to hit your sales targets, so what are you going to do? And a lot of that is about introductions. A lot of that is moving towards meetings through the power of that network. So, you know, looking at people that you are connected with, and you don't have to have met these people, but you've built some level of rapport with them and trust with them. And when you've got to that stage with someone, and online you can actually do that relatively quickly, um, you then say to them, hey, look, I noticed that you're connected to that person. How would you feel about introducing me? And, you know, you can't overdo that with one individual, clearly. But that's such a powerful tool. And we all know introductions are powerful. But the traditional way of asking for introductions has always been, who else do you know? Mm-hmm. Which, which, frankly, is a rubbish question, right? right? That doesn't work as a question because the emphasis is on the other person to think of someone. Why should they? You know, how they'll just kind of go, oh, yeah, I'll come back to you. I don't know. You know, I can't think off the top of my head. So it's much better to say, hey, look, I noticed that you're connected to that person. How well do you know them? They might not know them at all. They might just be connected to them. So check that first. And then when they confirm that they do know them, say, well, great. So how would you feel about introducing me to that person? And then it's far more likely to happen. So that's a big part of that uh, that final stage, the conversion stage, if you like. So. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, great. Great overview. And, and in a second, we're going to give you a chance to tell people how to find out more about that. But before we do that, can I go into the last segment of the show? I've got some standard questions I ask all my guests. And the first one is really a hypothetical scenario that you're the star of 
is that you've just been hired as a new sales manager, sales leader at a company whose sales have really gotten stuck and they need to get unstuck in a hurry. They're stalled out. So your first week on the job, what two things could you do that would have the biggest impact? Uh, okay. So in this scenario, I'm going to assume that they're like most companies that I've dealt with. Um, because the first question I would do, or the first thing I would do is I would talk to the salespeople and I'd ask them a lot of questions about the people that they want to do business with, potential customers, prospects. Mm -hmm. And the key question is, what keeps these people awake at night? What are their big issues? Forget what we can provide them for a second. Just let's think about them. What are their challenges? What are the things in their market that are causing them issues and challenges? What stops them being exceptionally profitable and successful? And there'll always be answers to that. But the problem is that a lot of people in sales just don't focus on that. So let's understand that. That would be number one. Number two would follow on from that logically. How can we help them overcome that problem? So this is very much referring to what that story that I told you before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How can we help you with that problem? Again, it doesn't have to be that we provide the solution. Obviously, fantastic if it is, great. But I just want to make sure that we're being seen as people that help our prospects solve their problems. And by doing so, we will build fantastic rapport and relationships with them and real trust. And they know what we do. We don't have to oversell it. They will come to us because they feel they wish to because we're someone that they want to do business with. So they would be the two steps. Find out what the problems are and then provide solutions to those problems. Whether that's a commercial solution or not doesn't matter. What you're trying to do is build that kind of trust. Excellent. Well stated. Well stated. So now I've got some rapid fire questions that I ask that you can give one word answers to or you can elaborate if you wish. So the first one is when you personally are selling, what's your most powerful sales attribute? Quality of what I do. Who's your sales? So, oh, go ahead. Expand. Okay. So just, just, just to explain what I mean by that. People get very carried away with you know selling a product and uh, features and benefits and all the rest of it. If you're great at what you do, sells itself. So so a lot of the, if you're in a job like mine, I focus a lot of my attention on what I do. The quality of what I do brings much more business into me than any form of marketing or sales technique. That's what I mean. Yeah, and I think that that's you know tied into you know clear passion you just demonstrate for it. You know, I think mm -hmm. people that are driven to really excel at a particular pursuit it's you know they've got a passion or a mission behind it and and when that comes through yeah people people want to do business with you mm. who's your sales role model gary vaynerchuk okay good answer <laughs> what's one book every salesperson should read the go-giver bob uh, berg bob berg yeah great book uh, and he's been a guest on the show as well. Uh, oh, okay, okay. But, yeah, so by the time this your episode airs here, people hit Bob's episode will have aired already, and people should go listen to it. It's a great, great conversation, a great book. Yeah. Um, tough question. What what music's on your playlist right now? Ooh, um, all kinds of <laughs> bit of a bit of a mix. Uh, actually, the most recent thing I've been listening to is Daft Punk. I don't know if you. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's quite a kind of high tempo stuff, but. Um, uh, the, it, I do a lot of public speaking, and the, I have one song that I listen to before I go on stage every time. Which is? Um, Coldplay, uh, Sky Full of Stars. Very interesting. Okay. The music just to that, get yourself pumped up. Yeah, exactly. That just gets me going. So, All right. Last question for you. What's the one question you get asked most frequently by salespeople? Should I upgrade my account? <laughs> and what's your answer? If you need to ask, the answer is no. Right. That's a great I. answer. I.e., when you, you need to learn to use this tool as a free user, when you know how to use the tool, you don't need to me ask me the question. You know that you will need to upgrade. You will get to a point where you know you need to. But if you're asking the question, then you're the answer ready. has to be no. Yeah, you're yeah. not ready. Ah, interesting yeah. answer. I love that. So we're talking about LinkedIn accounts specifically here. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have to ask whether you need to upgrade to a premium account, you're not ready. Excellent yeah. answer. I love that. Good. Well, Mark, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show today and Pleasure. tell people how they can find out more about you. Okay. So I'm um, obviously on LinkedIn, uh, uk.linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Mr. LinkedIn. 
Uh, and website is winbusinessin.com. And I have two podcasts, LinkedIn Forms that you mentioned earlier, which is kind of like a weekly show for LinkedIn fanboys and girls, really. But the one probably more relevant to this audience is the Win Business In podcast. And that is specifically focused on business development use of LinkedIn. So um, both found on iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, so uh, that, that's the other way of finding me as well. Excellent. Yeah, and I recommend people uh, listen to those because this has been a great show, lots of great information about LinkedIn, and uh, they should check it out. So again, Mark, thanks for being on the show. Great, right, pleasure. Enjoy. And uh, remember, friends, make it a part of your day every day to deliberately learn something new to help you accelerate your success and making this podcast accelerate a part of your daily routine is an easy way to do that because then you'll make sure you don't miss any of my conversations with top business experts like my guest today, Mark Williams, who shared his expertise about how to grow your business using LinkedIn. So thanks for joining us. And until next time, this is Andy Paul. Good selling, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. If you like what you heard and want to make sure you don't miss any upcoming episodes, please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher.com. For more information about today's guests, visit my website at andypaul.com.